quarterback situation in West Virginia, does that alter preparations? Much? It does. Uh, it's interesting. I think you take a different approach depending on who's playing quarterback for these guys. Uh, we're preparing for both. I would anticipate seeing both. Um, I think that uh, Green has done a really good job of uh, you know throwing some life into that uh, offense. But uh, obviously, JT Daniels was the guy. And so uh, uh, be surprised if they make a wholesale change. Um, but uh, um, yeah, definitely two different uh, styles of attack for them. Another week, another team that likes to go for it on fourth down. <laughs> Big 12 football, man. I mean, that's just the, uh, um, you know, offensive football in this league is so uh, dynamic. And um, yeah, and, and these guys are as dynamic as anyone. Name to the Broyles watch list, I think it was, or semifinalist. What's that mean to you? <laughs> I'm not a humongous uh, Twitter guy, I guess. So I didn't even really know about it right away. Um, I, I, I think it's a credit to the players uh, more than anybody. It's a credit to the other assistants. Um, you know, I'm just the guy that happens to be the, the beneficiary of it all. I mean, I, the players play their uh, hearts out every Saturday. And uh, I mean, that, that award, I, I hope, gives them as much pride as it does uh, as it does me. Kobe, it seems like a pretty big deal. But how do you go about replacing him in the secondary? Uh, we've been pretty cross-trained, I guess, with a lot of guys. Um, you know, TJ Smith has got a lot of game reps under him for years now. Um, since Sir Mason's got a lot of game reps under him, uh, I'm excited. Uh, the opportunity to maybe get uh, VJ Payne some more reps, maybe get uh, Kendra Steiger some more reps now. Um, and so uh, it opens up some doors for other people. Um, obviously, uh, I feel terrible for Kobe. Um, you know, he was just starting to play his best football and starting to get into the groove a little bit. And, um, you know, he cares so much about the game and this team. It just, it just breaks my heart. I uh, didn't think it was as serious as it was um, when it happened because he walked off the field. And I would expect nothing less. The guy's just an absolute soldier. And uh, But, yeah, we're going to have to pick up his slack by committee. I know a lot of things went right for you on Saturday, but big picture, why was it such a good day on defense? Uh, I, think, I think our guys were just comfortable in the game flow. I think we did uh, um, a great job in preparation. Uh, they did. Um, I, I think that... Uh, uh, guys were just ready to accept the challenge. I, I, you know, nothing spectacular happened. Uh, I can point to plenty of mistakes that we made uh, on tape, uh, but just as kind of been the, you know, the happenstance all season is our guys just played their, their tails off and they overcame some of those things. And Saturday was no different. Coach Klavan kind of alluded to it. It's kind of been like in every other game kind of thing because it didn't work out so well against TCU in Texas. I mean, can you detect like the difference between those performances when it works? Uh, it no, I, I, I can't. You know, you could point to a lot of things uh, in the TCU game, for example, that just were absolute, uh, you know, Murphy's Law, I guess. And I think Texas, some, some, some of the same. And uh, I don't, I don't attribute that to to anything. I don't attribute that to the players not being focused or the coaches having a bad play. I don't, I don't, I don't think that was the case. I think it was just. Uh, um, you know, maybe uh, myself, maybe just a little slow to react on some of those days, or or not over to overcome certain things that that happened. And and uh, but I, I think the players have showed up every Saturday. And I would expect this Saturday to be the same. Coach Kleiman said that last week was the first time Deuce Green's able been able to practice for pretty much full goes in South Dakota. Having him back, I mean, as healthy as you can be at this point in the season, what does that mean for you? It's defense? awesome. I mean, it's 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 great. And and not only Deuce, you know, I know <clears throat> Nate Matlack had missed substantial practice time. Felix had missed substantial practice time. Um, you know, to get those guys going in the flow, I think we're maybe starting to get there, uh, whereas other teams maybe got there in mid-October. And so, uh, but Deuce just provides such a leadership for our guys. He's such a vocal presence, just a presence overall. Uh, I think that that is... Uh, you know, just gives kind of a, a pulse to our team. Felix, hold up against the constant double teams, never getting held, and having to stay out of it. <laughs> hey, um, no, he's he's uh, you know Felix is, is special that way. You know, because he's not built to 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 do some of the things that we ask him to do inside. Uh, you know, obviously he does all the stuff on the edge really well. You know, he's not a 275, 280-pound guy that, that belongs in there, but he does great in there just because he's so quick, he's so strong. Uh, he's able to, you know, hold point and, and kind of position himself so that he doesn't get moved. Um, so he's been um, he's been awesome. We've done a little bit more of that stuff, uh, putting those guys inside than we did last year maybe at times, uh, just to kind of spice up the fronts somewhat. Um, and he's been, you know, he, he does that stuff phenomenally well. Does Khalid 
responded to plan up front quite a bit. Yeah, we, we've moved him. Uh, <laughs> You know, and it's no secret, we've been saying it for weeks, you know, we just got to get Khalid doing the things that he does really well. You know, his, his, you know, his skill set is, is he can, we can get by, but his skill set, he's not going to be the best when he's out in the apex covering down two and, you know, rerouting people. And that's not his, that's not his deal. You know, we need to get him running straight lines. We need to get him in the mix. We need to get him um, as close to the football as possible because when he's around it, he'll find it. Hey, Joe, when you hear mob mentality, what comes to mind? I think it's a, a it's a uh, kind of a, a chip on your shoulder thing. I think it's a and because of that chip on your shoulder, I think that makes you go the extra mile in your preparation. It makes you go the extra mile in your effort. It makes you play with courage, and it makes you play for each other. And I think that's the you know as big of anything. I think the mob mob is a, a deal where it just brings people together. I think it, it's it's all for one. And I think that's a, a, this this unit is such an embodiment of that.